Thank you so much for having me in this poly user group meeting. My name is Hans Gayi. I'm from the University of Florida in Gainesville. Today we'll be talking about targeting metastatic pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, a data-driven target identification. This has been an important partnership that we've had with the Lucidata group. I'm looking forward to talking some more uh, about some of our work. So beginning with pheochromocytoma, it is actually a tumor that arises from the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla. The adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys and they're important in making stress hormones such as epinephrine and norepinephrine. There are also extra adrenal pheochromocytomas called paragangliomas that arise from the sympathetic and parasympathetic chain ganglia. This nerve ganglia basically arises from the base of the skull all the way down to the pelvis. And the incidence of these tumors is about two to eight cases per million people per year. Since these tumors can make catecholamines can, that can raise blood pressure, we've learned that the prevalence is about 0.1% of hypertensive patients. If a patient has disease that has spread everywhere or metastatic disease, the prognosis is actually poor for such patients. Over the last several years, we've learned that there are about 20 genes associated with pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas, more than any other endocrine tumor. When a patient actually presents for surgery and has her tumor removed, unfortunately, the pathologist is not able to tell you whether the patient is at higher risk for metastatic disease or not. Usually we find out when the patient clinically presents with disease that has spread all over their body. What does give us a clue, however, is what kind of a genetic mutation they have, such as uh, a succinate dehydrogenase type B mutation. If a patient has metastatic disease, there are no effective treatments for these patients. And therefore, um, such patients are looking for clinical trials or even chemotherapeutic regimens in order to uh, reduce their disease burden. Considering this difficult uh, state for such patients, we decided to look at other tumors that arise from the nervous system, such as neuroblastomas, uh, which could be related to uh, some of the same similarities in terms of how pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas may work. Therefore, we looked at Gamble et al.'s paper that showed that by inhibiting this polyamine pathway in mice that have neuroblastomas, there could be some success in, in treating patients with such tumor types. We hypothesize that perhaps if we inhibit the polyamine pathway or target the polyamine pathway, this would be a valuable therapeutic strategy in metastatic pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. Just to take a step back, the polyamine pathway is, is an important pathway because its components are made of important, highly regulated cations that are important for the cell's function, such as uh, DNA synthesis and replication, also protein synthesis, um, as well as phosphorylation events. So one can think that if you're targeting such important components of, of a cell's machinery, this would be a valuable target in terms of uh, being a therapeutic strategy for metastatic pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. Therefore, we decided to take about over 100 pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma fresh frozen tumor samples and do mass spec uh, metabolomics uh, on these tumor samples. We had about 37 tumors that had a succinate dehydrogenase gene mutation, whether it included subunit B, C, or D. Um, and we had 74 tumors that did not have a succinate dehydrogenase mutation. In addition, our group had uh, developed a human progenitor pheochromocytoma cell line. The cell line 
was, was derived from a patient that had a pheochromocytoma tumor. And because the patient did not have any known germline driver pheochromocytoma mutations, we decided to take advantage of this progenitor line and knock down SDHB in that line and do cell line metabolomics. Our basic approach was to do metabolomic profiling, having the data analyzed using this LMAVEN and poly uh, platform to determine whether the polyamine pathway is important. And then from there, if so, we would develop a preclinical experimental model looking at in vitro as well as in vivo data to determine whether this would be of clinical relevance. So looking further at the data analysis point of view here, after the tissue samples and cell line underwent a mass spec analysis, the raw data was actually uploaded into this LMAVEN software. And it was further uh, analyzed in the software and targeted peak annotation uh, was performed. Uh, from LMAVEN. From this targeted peak annotation, the polyantomics platform was used to look at the downstream uh, effects from here to determine how uh, important the polyamine pathway is in pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma. This uh, downstream analysis it gave opportunities for optimization uh, for this KEG network analysis as well as pathway interpretation. Another important component of polyantomics that we see here is the ability for us to actually combine transcriptomic and proteomic uh, data from other databases and to really validate some of the findings uh, that we've seen. So what we found uh, from doing an analysis is that when we looked at the tissue samples with succinate dehydrogenase mutations, we saw that succinate levels were elevated. And when we looked at the cell line data, we saw that succinate was elevated. And we actually expected this. This is known information because as we look at the Krebs cycle and we're going from succinate to fumarate in this Krebs cycle, and there's a succinate dehydrogenase mutation, that should actually cause succinate to arise. And we see that. So we knew we were on the right track here. So looking further at the polyamine pathway, we see that in the succinate dehydrogenase mutated groups, uh, we see that certainly spermidine, spermine levels were much higher uh, in the tumor tissue uh, succinate dehydrogenase mutated samples. And we see this similar trend in the succinate dehydrogenase uh, SDHB knockdown cell line. Looking at the polyantomics platform, we see from that further um, analysis this was, that was done uh, using this polyantomics platform, we see that the peaks that were seen in LMAVEN were, were further uh, defined as really being highly upregulated uh, with things like L-ornithine, spermidine, and spermine, further validating uh, the point, our hypothesis that the polyamine pathway is indeed critical uh, for these tumors. We went further with this uh, information and, and uh, basically used a polyamine inhibitor called diethylspermine that was developed uh, by our close collaborator, Dr. Raymond Bergeron, and, and found that diethylspermine indeed has started to kill cells at the 40 nanomolar concentration. These are the wild type HVO1 cells. Now, when we look at the SDHB knockdown cells, we see a striking difference that even at 20 nanomolar concentration, we see a profound effect in terms of the cells dying out with diethylspermine treatment. Because diethylspermine is not in the clinic, and diethylnorspermine, its sister polyamine inhibitor, is currently in a phase two clinical trials, we decided to turn our attention to diethylnorspermine and do the same in vitro experiment. And we do indeed see here that at 50 nanomolar concentration in wild type cells, 
the, the HVO1 wild type cells started to die out, whereas the SDHB knockdown cells started to die out starting at 30 nanomolar concentration. So you see a differential effect uh, with the SDHB knockdown versus the wild type cells going along well with what the L-maven and the polyantomics pathway was pointing out to earlier. We moved further and did in vivo experiments making mouse xenograft models from this cell line, the wild type, as well as the SDHB knockdown cell line. And we see with the PBS treated arms in both cell uh, xenografts uh, that the tumors uh, continue to grow uh, from day zero to day 36. Whereas with diethyl norospermine treatment, we see uh, an, a really nice shrinkage in tumors uh, compared to plus, uh, the PBS samples. So this was very exciting news for us. And, and definitely this led to a publication in Metabolism because of such a wonderful partnership with the Lucidata in our group. Uh, our next steps here is to continue this, this collaboration and, and look at a multi-omics analysis uh, using the public data sources such as GEO and the TCGA databases. This is, this is something that is going to be really critical, especially uh, as we're using the polyantomics platform to further do these analysis and to determine the specific components that would be critical in terms of new targets that would be involved with what we call precision medicine care and, and uh, be effective for specific patients. And that's where we're really leading to with our partnership. And we believe that um, further uh, understanding of the underpinnings of the relationship between the TCA cycle uh, mutations as well as a polyamine pathway will be important. And we believe that these uh, platforms such as uh, the polyantomics platform that I had talked about earlier is gonna be important for this uh, development. With that, I would like to acknowledge uh, all the people that are listed on this slide. As you can see, this has included groups from the United States, Asia, as well as Europe. And it was through this scientific collaboration that important developments are made uh, for, for finding new therapeutic strategies for patients that are in need. Thank you so much for your attention, and I look forward to your questions.